Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi ta'ala wa barakatuh. My name is Zainab Abdullahi and inshallah today we'll be talking on the book Discovering Islam which is written by Mustafa al Kazwini. This book is dedicated to the master of all human from the beginning of the creation to the end which is Fatima to Zahra, peace and blessings of Allah be upon her. Beloved daughter of the Prophet Muhammad ibn Abdullah as we wait her intercession on the final day. The writing and publishing of this book will not have been achieved without Allah the Almighty and the assistance of many dedicated people within our community. Special thanks goes to Sister Fatima Saleh for her tremendous work in assisting with the second edition. A deep appreciation and prayer goes to Sajjad Foundation and its trustees for making this book available to readers. May Almighty Allah, the aforementioned names, and all of the faithful people who spread the light of Islam. Um, I will be talking on where the writer talks about who are, who are the Muslims and also what are Islam. Muslims are the followers on the religion of Islam. That is those people who submit to the will of Allah as explained in the Quran and the traditions of Prophet Muhammad, the messenger of Islam. Today, the Muslim population is about 1.2 billion and it is spread over a vast range of races, nationalities and cultures. Approximately 18% of the Muslims live in the Arab world, but the majority live in Asia and Africa. The largest Muslim population is, majority, is in Indonesia, and a significant number of Muslims minorities exist in Russia, China, and Europe. North America and South America, the Muslim population in the United States is estimated to be around 6 million and growing. How does one become a Muslim? The best requirement to become a Muslim is to declare Ashhadu Allah ilaha illallah wa ashhadu anna Muhammadur Rasulullah. In English, this means I testify that there is no Allah but Allah and that is and that Muhammad is the messenger of Allah. Anyone who proclaims the phrase joins the ranks of the Muslim nation. The statement marks the beginning of one's physically the spiritual journey is journey in practicing all, all aspects of Islam. A Muslim strives to become one whom the Quran terms as the faithful mu'minin, although this journey is becoming faithful, may be long. Its reward and numerous for those who embark on it with sincerity, will, and intention. Practicing Islam requires learning Islamic ideas, teachings, and practices, then adapting to them. Moreover, Islamic practice requires some sacrifice. However, the necessity of sacrifice should not be a deterrent. Prophet Muhammad states, Whenever someone gives up something for the sake of Allah, Allah will replace it with something better. What we mean here is that no matter how little is it, don't say that it must be something very big, even if it is with small amount of money, food or something. When your brother doesn't have Please, you should bear with him and share it with him. Sincerity of belief also develops over time. When Prophet Muhammad began spreading the message of Islam, some people came to him and informed him that they were believers in Islam. In replying, Allah revealed the following verse, says, Muhammad, you believe not, but say, we have submitted to Islam, for faith has not yet entered your heart. Quran 49 verse 14. The successor to Prophet Muhammad, Imam Ali alayhi salam, has described the dynamic process of following Islam, which he says, I am defining Islam as no one has defined it before me. Islam is submission, submission in conviction, conviction in affirmation, affirmation in acknowledgement, and acknowledgement is performance of obligation, and the performance of obligation is good deeds. Imam Ali Alayhi salam was Prophet Muhammad's cousin and son-in-law. Since the age of six, Imam Ali was raised and educated by Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam. Imam Ali alayhi salam was the
husband of Fatima, Fatima to Zahra, salamullahi alayha, and he was the father of Imam Hassan and Imam Hussein, and he is also the backbone of Prophet Muhammad, sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam, and he also helped Prophet Muhammad, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, towards spreading Islam, and he is also the backbone of Prophet Muhammad, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. With this, we come to the end of um, how does one become a Muslim. Now we are moving to the pillars of Islam, which is the Islamic beliefs. We are oneness of Allah, which is Al-Tawheed. Allah is the center of Muslims' belief, whereas certain religions focus on individuals. For example, Christianity focuses on Jesus Christ, and Islam focuses only on Allah. Islam is based on the absolute, that is Allah, and not his manifestation. The Quran itself speaks, speaks on the oneness of Allah, which says, Allah has borne witness that there is no Allah but him and the angel, and those with knowledge also witness this. He is always standing firm on justice. There is no Allah but him, the mighty, the wise. Quran 3 verse 18. The oneness of Allah is not only a philosophical argument, but also an affirmation in which all human beings once declared the oneness of Allah before their souls entered their body. Remember, when your Lord brought forth the children of Adam before their loins and made them testify over themselves, saying, Am I not your Lord? They said, Yes, we testify, lest you should say on the day of resurrection. Verily, we were unaware of this. Quran 7 verse 172. At this time, every person to be created proclaims Allah's majesty, sovereignty, power, transcendence, and absolute oneness. Such was the covenant Allah made with the people at the time of their creation, whether people presently claim to believe in Allah or not. Similarly, all people today, regardless of origin, are naturally inclined towards the idea that Allah is one and without a partner. The Quran inform, informs Prophet Muhammad of the following. Set your face to the true religion, that is Islamic monetism, the natural incline, that is Al-Fitra, which which one has created mankind. Let there be no change in what Allah has made, that, there, that is straight religion, but most people do not understand. Quran 30 verse 30, describing Allah. Um, now we are going to in, we are going into describing Allah. One of the shortest chapters in the Quran, the oneness of Allah, summarizes the nature of Allah in five verses. In the name of Allah, the infinitely compassionate, the most merciful, says, He is Allah, the One, the eternal originator. He does not bear children, nor was he born, and he is beyond compare. What we mean here is that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has no partner. You should not associate Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with any partner in any way and no matter how what situation. The most fundamental Islamic teachings about Allah are contained in previous verses. There is only one Allah. He is eternal, unique and has no kinship, creator or resemblance to any human being. Prophets have stated some of the divine attribute of Allah. Prophet Abraham alayhi salam said, My Lord is he who gives life and causes death. Quran 2 verse 258. When confronting Pharaoh, Moses said, Our Lord is he who gave each thing its form and nature, then guided it aright. That is Quran 20 verse 50. Two verses described Allah in his relation to humans to human beings. However, Allah's being extends far beyond his rela relation to humankind. Imam Ali alayhi salam described Allah in the following manner. He said, He who assigns to him different conditions does not believe in his oneness, nor does he who likens him grasp his reality. He who illustrates him does not say signi does not signify him. He who points at him and imagines him does not mean him. Everything that is known through itself has been created, and everything that exists by virtue of other things is the effect of a cause. He works but not with the help of instruments. He fixes measures but not with the activities of thinking. He is rich but not by acquisition. 
Time does not keep company with him. An implement does not, does not help him. His being an implement does not, does not help me. Does not help him. His being precedes time. His existence precedes non-existence. And his eternity precedes time by his creation and sense. It is known that he has no one. What Imam Ali alayhi salam is trying to tell us here is that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is beyond your imagination. Whatsoever way you want to describe Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you can only describe it the way you know it. But you cannot describe who Almighty Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is. By the contraries in various matters, it is known that he has no contrary, and by the similarities between things, it is known that there is nothing similar to him. He has made light the contrary of darkness, brightness that of gloom, dryness that of moisture, and heat that of cold. He produced affection among inimical things. He is not confirmed by limits nor content by numbers material parts and can surround things of their own kind and organs can point out things similar to themselves through them the creator manifests himself to the intelligence and through them he is guarded from the sign of the eye he has no begotten anyone lest he be regarded as having been born he has not been begotten otherwise he will be contained within limits he is too high to have sons Understanding cannot think of him so as to give him sheep. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala expresses his own eternity and prepunity in the Quran when he stated that everything on earth has, shall perish, but the faces of Allah will remain full of majesty and honor. Quran 55 verse 26 to 27. With this, we are going to stop here on describing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. In our next episode, in the book of Discovering Islam, we will be talking of the, on the 99 names of Allah together with me, your sister in Islam, Zainab Abdullahi.